morning beautiful morning just gone about nine o'clock got three rods in I'm on the river roll that intro and let's see how we get on today We have a run. We have a run. Cool. This was the smelt rod. So I'm gonna have to throw this net over here. Because I'm having to play this fish if it is a fish. I don't know if it's a fish or not. I don't feel anything. No, nothing, don't know what that was. Don't know what happened there. Something must have been came past and had a tug or something. Let's have a look at the little smelt, see if there's any teeth marks on it. camera no there's no there's no obvious slashes punctures hmm. let's put this back out again it's a nice little smelt I don't have to fish very far out here. And that's just on the bottom. Because it's a bit of a bit of a strange swim, there's like a oh. let me just set this rod up first and then I will explain to you where we are Towards that way is Balnalek. Bird in the sunshine. Up towards that way is Clanish Island and the viaduct. Right, so this is the River Urn. There is a smaller river that flows in here called the River Arnie. The River Arnie flows out of Loch McNean. Uh, there's two, there's an upper and there's a lower McNean, but they're basically the River Arnie is what flows out of there. Now every year, the roach will start to swim up the River Sillies to Loch Ross to spawn, and up the River Arnie to Loch McNean to spawn. Now the River Arnie is literally kind of about 50 yards that way, in that next field. The original plan was to fish in that field, but the farmers put up a brand new fence that goes right alongside the bank, which was awesome of them to uh, basically reduce, stop the access to the river for anglers, well done farmer. Even though that there's like styles over there that's for anglers to get into that field to go up to those meetings to fish. Now I don't know how long those that fence has been in there. The last time I was here was probably, in fact, the last time I was here was March last year. This, this sort of time last year. So, anyway, I'm not going to have a rant about the farmer. 
And again, I apologise for the, the sunshine. Well, I actually don't apologise for the sunshine. It's not often we get fucking sunshine, so I'm enjoying the sunshine. So we're on the river. This is a, this is a, it's not that deep. It's no real current because the water is very low down. Normally when you come here, you can't really see the end of this gate. You know, so the river is very low at the minute. And there was, upon a time, a massive big tree here. So God knows what's happened to it. It's obviously been taken down. Uh, it makes the fishing a little bit easier. But I can see the person who's in this field next, next to here is putting some sort of floating jetty in. He has big uh, signs up on his gate saying private access, no, no access. So, it looks like somebody's putting in their own marina there. You know, fair enough, it's their land, let them do what they want with it. It'd be nice to maybe meet the farmer and uh, get access to it, because at the bottom of that corner there's a there's an area that usually holds holds decent fish. So, I'll have to do some investigating to find out who owns that field. And maybe see if he's amenable to letting me fish it for an exchange of like a bottle of Jameson's or something like that. The worst thing you can do here in Northern Ireland and in the Republic is just arrive and go onto someone's land and just take the piss and start fishing. That, that, that will mean the landowner will arrive down and you're on his land and straight away he'll be combative going, why are you on my land? There is a sign saying no access. Whereas before, if you go there beforehand and you, uh, you say, hello, I'd like to fish, any chance? I mean, what's the worst they can say? The worst they can say is no. So you haven't lost anything. You know, and yes, there is the old, the old, uh, better to ask forgiveness than ask permission argument. I get that. I do get that. But sometimes when landowners are a little bit uh, protective, it's just manners, I think. But that's just me. Anyway, you've seen that rod, that rod's just smelt. The other two rods out, there is a pollen and a mackerel on the other two, on the other rods. And they're all ledgered on the bottom except for the pollen, which obviously will be popped up because it is a pollen. This area here is frequently used by farmers to fill up slurry tankers to water cattle and stuff like that there, so... I might have to move that sharpish if the farmer comes down, but again it's... It's what you do, you know, you're fishing on top of an access point to the river. If the farmers need water for cattle, then you just have to suck it up and move. Hopefully it won't be as big a cake in ours party as what it was with the uh, guy lifting the pigs off the fucking island. But we can only keep our fingers crossed. Anyway, I think it's time to have a, a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> It's not been a bad day so far. I found a little, it's a little Rapala. X Rap Countdown. Those are actually quite expensive. It's a little rattling thing. It's on a shit trace. This is why I don't like these traces, because if you can pull them apart, then they're kind of shit. And you can see where this one's failed. The actual swivel at the end is snapped. Do yourselves a favour guys, if you're wanting to do some lure fishing for pike um, Avoid fluorocarbon, straight off the bat, don't use fluorocarbon But There's those cheap, nasty, shit, green Trisses That people buy in like packs of a thousand from like China Avoid those like the plague, because the swivels are shit And the clips are crap uh, Okay, that's probably been sat in the water for a while but I can do that, I can pull these apart, those green ones apart, brand new out of the packet. So, there is some, if you're going to do lure fishing, uh, a, a titanium leader can't go wrong. Solid titanium leader, you cannot go wrong. If you want a bit more flexibility, then there is seven strand titanium wire that gives you a bit more flexibility. Say if you're using like a, like a crankbait or something that you want to kind of get the wobble, 
but for 99.9% of my lure fishing it's a it's a straightforward 100 pound to 150 pound titanium solid leader you don't need uh, I mean a fluorocarbon is just shit you know I wouldn't advise any man to use fluorocarbon you know I can show you a thousand videos on YouTube of pike biting through fluorocarbons uh, so therefore it's not pike safe because the last thing you want to do is leave that in the mouth of a pike how's it meant to feed or eat when it's got that there stuck in its throat you know so again it goes back to my theory that everything I cast out I want to be able to bring back now okay the bait will fall off maybe the lead will get snagged and left behind but that doesn't cause any damage leaving a bait on the bottom as long as you've pulled the trace back out with you I mean there's times I've been snagged up and I've had to wrap the braid around the branch of a tree and walk back uh, and you'll and I've pulled the trace so that the hooks are almost straight out and there's other times where I've actually dragged out the branch of the tree that's been in there you know so it's a case of you want to have the strong enough gear to get the fish to the bank to get it netted in the quickest time so with that there I'm going to go and I'm probably going to sink that in a, a little bath to clean it top tip for cleaning it uh, go to the dentist not the dentist go to the chemist and get the, uh, the little dissolvable tablets for uh, cleaning old people's de fake teeth the dentures and basically put that into a cup of lukewarm water put the little tablet in and leave that in it overnight and you'll find all the rust and all the shit will have been peeled off it you'll have to replace the split rings you'll have to replace the hooks because they're wasted but that's a good little I mean Rapala's aren't cheap that's probably about six or seven pound maybe even more Rapala X wrap countdown now I'm not sure whether they're fishing for pike or whether they're fishing for perch that's quite a nice little little lure The responsible adult for today, Steve, slept in, so he'll be here probably later. I'm not sure if that was a run. I'm not sure. The line, the, the drop arm did lift up and drop down again, so either something knocked it, knocked it. But it's put back out to where it was. There was no resistance when I, when I lifted the rod. So if it is a pike, it's sniffing around, well then, it, hopefully it'll come back. But this sun is glorious. I am loving the sunshine. Whew. Next week, we're meant to be back to below negative temperatures again. I was going to go to a shallow, weedy venue, but last night the temperatures fell below frozen, freezing. So that kind of knocked that plan on the head. So I went to the river. I went to a couple of different different uh, locations. I had a I had a bit of a walk up and down. I did go to Balna Lake. I did go to, um, if you know, in a skull and there's like an opera house. I took a walk on the floating jetty there. Now that place isn't. It's kind of overlooked. It's above Derry Chara, so you're above the sewer. Yes, there is an open sewer that flows into the river or at Derry Chara. So it's above that. But because it's a floating, basically it's a, it's a marina, a boat marina, a public boat marina. We're now kind of getting to the point where it's warm enough that people will be on their boats. And that can be a bit crap because people in boats, some people are cool, some people are fine, but other people look at... Uh, anglers is like you would look at dog shit you've stepped in they don't like us so they will kind of you know tell you to get off their jetty their jetty even though it's a first come first serve public access jetty interesting story i had a youngster fishing with me it was his second or third time fishing i was course fishing I had him set up in a seat box, I had him set up with a 7 metre whip and he was catching a little roach in perch this size. So he was doing well, you know, he was he was able to flick the whip, he was able to, you know, 
set the hooks and bring them in. He was able to, able, he was able to get to the point where he was beginning to net his own fish, which was good. He was kind of learning how to coordinate himself. And the, at that point, the jetty had nobody on it. There was not a sinner on this jetty. There wasn't another boat tied up. There was nothing. And the jetty is quite big. You know, it, it is easily 50 foot, you know, in length. It's a massive, massive big jetty. And this guy came steaming in on his big cruiser. I stood on top of the, 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 the where it was, the boat. And he was like, Shoo shoo, get get moving. I, I want to moor here. And I kind of said, "What?" Excuse, I was kind of pointed to like the like the rest of the jetty where there was nobody on it. And he was, "No, no, you will move. This is where I am mooring." And I thought, "Well, I move." Hmm. I says, "I'll give you a choice." I says, "If your boat just touches any of my fishing tackle." I am going to come onto your boat and I'm going to uh, have words with you. And he eventually phoned the police and he phoned the, the wardens, the lock wardens, and made accusations that that I was threatening to, to do things to him. At this point there's kind of somewhat of a crowd gathered, about four or five people. And the, the, the warden came up from Inniskillen and asked, you know, what what what's what's going on? And it kind of explained, you know, massive, massive jetty. We are here, minding our own business. Mr. Entitled in his boat has decided that we must uh, vacate the area because, well, he is in a boat. The, the, the warden kind of said to him, you know, don't be a dickhead, you know, stop being an arsehole. That was the second occasion. That was the second occasion where something like that had happened. The other occasion, the boy, you know, he made he made that much of an art, like effort jumping up and down his boat. And I was praying, I was praying he stepped foot onto dry land, because yeah, at that point we would have had uh, some hands-on teaching about respect and manners. This was another clown that decided to come out of the marina, and because he's seen some anglers. He decided to do donuts in the uh, the bay where we were fishing, and turn the water from uh, from like the normal sort of colour to uh, brown mud soup. Laughing the whole time he did it, I thought, all right, okay. So I started to uh, catapult uh, balls of ground bit at him, and then he said, "Oh, you're going to pay for my boat to be cleaned," and I thought, "Oh, am I?" Awesome, bring your boat on to the moor it up here and, and and yes I will of course clean it. Arsehole. If a man of lake lands is big enough for everybody, I do not get why people feel so entitled, you know, that they can arrive onto a place and decide, you know, I'm going to deliberately fuck with this person just because I can, because something in my head says I'm entitled enough to do it. People are strange, aren't they? Speaking of strange people, I I haven't really been keeping up on the whole Jinjin Winge and the royal family thing, mainly because it kind of bores the piss out of me. But I hear that the king has uh, said to to his son. Pack your bags, I'm taking the house off of you. And this kind of made me chuckle, he goes, I'm kicking you out of the cottage. Now in my mind, the cottage is like a little, little one, two bedroom thing with a thatched roof, you know, and small, small, little cottage. And then I looked into the this little cottage. It's got fucking six ensuite bedrooms. Cottage my arse, it's a fucking massive big house. But he's kicking Ginger and Winge out of it to move in his nonce brother, Andrew. Well, alleged nonce. You know. Allegedly had sex with a woman who then paid 
12 million pounds to had to sell his chalet in Vermont and Don't get me wrong, I'm all for the monarchy, purely for a tourism thing, because of the money it brings in for the tourism. You know, I did like the Queen. I thought the Queen was a very nice lady. I, th I mean, you couldn't have faulted her work ethic. The lady worked to the point where she was, to the, nearly to the point where she died. And I'm sure she looked at her kids during her life and wondered, what the fuck did I do to end up with this pack of retards? But as the as the old saying goes, you 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 respect the position, maybe not so much the man or the woman. That's the same as in the forces when you have an officer that might be a complete cocksucker. But the carrier commission, therefore you respect the rank, even though the person is a smoker of the pink flute. Respect. That's the randomness today. My wife's all into that crap. It's like she's like, oh, this is what's happening now with Meghan Markle. It's like, I'm, I, I love you. You're the mother of my children. I've bought a house for you. I've married you. Please listen to me very carefully when I say to you, I could not give a flying monkey's fuck about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. I think into the dictionary if there's a there's a picture of Prince Harry underneath the the, uh, the term pussy whipped because he's deaf that's, that's, that's the only thing I can ex describe what's happened to him. You know beforehand he was a bit of a rowdy guy that partied he was very into his armed forces charities he'd done the Invictus games he'd done tons of fishing and field sports he was a he was a advocate for the countryside and you know, getting people out in the countryside and doing fishing and shooting and and along comes Meghan Markle and become the he's uh he's now become the uh the super soy woke hero that he is now. All for a woman. Guys, never do that. Never change exactly everything about you just to satisfy someone else. You'll eventually grow up and get really bitter and you'll hate yourself for it. Be proud of who you are. Okay, if you've got certain flaws, you know, maybe you're a bit overweight, maybe you kind of drink too much, then you can work on that, you know, to get healthy. Then you, this is, this is me talking to you, you know, the bastion of fucking physical peak for performance. You know, you are who you are. Be proud of who you are. Don't change everything about yourself just to satisfy someone else. You're not a project, you're a human being. Have respect for yourself. Oh, Kingfisher. Anyway, I'm going to... I'm thinking about sitting here in my pants and get a suntan. That'll fucking traumatise Steve when he eventually arrives. <laughs> anyway, let's get some stuff sorted. I might uh, inject the bits with oils and get some get some scent trail going down. Yeah, that would work. Right, my mackerel looks to have made a run. Okay, I can feel something on there. Mm. Okay. No, no, it's on there. How's that line? Straight out in front of me. Here it comes. Damn it. Whoa, fucking hell. That goes quick. Fucking you ever do that? 
Right, hold on, hold on, let's tag up that other line. Just let it sit in the water there. Look at this. What? It's not freeze itself. Right. It's off the base. It's free itself. Right. They leave it. So I saw there's something there. I'll tell you what, that's fucking dodgy there, mate. It's very deceptive. Yeah. That's gravel, it's not gravel. Right, let me try and unhook that thing now. It's unhooked, but it's this here. I just need to unclip the, the trace. Yeah. No, no, unclip, just unclip the trace, leave it in the net. I'll, I'll sort that out later. Big fish. It's not a big fish, you know. I'll just carry it up the. It's just a wee jack. I didn't run away, you son. I'm just going to put you back in. It's healthy enough. There's no problems with them. That was on a, a red mackerel. There he goes. It's not a blank. Let's see what weight this one is. under 14 pound. Still, it's a double. Just weighed this one. It's just under 14 pound. It's been recovering in this in the in the waistline with the retainer for a little bit. There we go. Just under 14 pound. Of River Urn Angry Pike. So, two fish, one of them being a double, just under 14 pounds. Not bad, that one came on a small trout, uh, like a small farmed, uh, I think it was actually a farmed salmon power, I think. Pike Pro, not Pike, oh, it was Pike, or... They, got, they came from Neville Ficklin in England, Loose Bits, that's where I got them from. So, I have the three rods back out again. Smelt, a pollen, and I have a sardine that's put out this time. We've had spots of torrential rain, We've had uh, random arseholes arrive down in the cars, then do a six million point turn to try and reverse out of a lane. We've had, we've had a guy coming past in his boat that was going to mow over the top of us to have screened at him. So yeah, it's been an interesting day. Cooking was good, I had a, a sausage and egg wrap. That was like the first time I've done them in a long time. I'd happily do them again. They were top class. They were quite good. I quite enjoyed them. I had to put the I had to put the, the umbrella up because it was just when the rain was coming down, the rain was coming down, bathroom down, so the brolly had to go up. Didn't want to put the brolly up, but the brolly is now up.
I'm in a little bit of discomfort today. My back is absolutely killing me. I had, don't know what I did, but on Tuesday, I got like a real, 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 my back kicked off on Tuesday. And I managed to speak with my, my doctor, or a doctor, it's not my doctor, it's some fucking randomer that has a doctor beside his name. And he gave me some diazepam, which was interesting. Go to work on diazepam plus the normal stuff I take. So I have no idea if last week was productive or not. But they give me like four diazepam. You know. So that got me to like Friday. And then I kind of had to, was Friday night I was sleeping on the floor because I was just in bits. The bed wasn't comfortable. So yeah, today I'm a little bit, bit sore. Now this is on top of having to uh, take the the maximum dose of uh, tramadol, slow release tramadol every day. So yeah, I'm a bit a bit sore today. I could have probably done with staying in bed and not going fishing, but here we are. You don't catch big pike sitting in your bed. So you just have to Bear with me and my uh, wrecked body. <laughs> oh. I'm still kind of in a bit of shock about how low this river has got recently. You know, normally you don't even see the end of the gate that's at the bottom there. It's normally that's completely under the water. So that's a good meter. You know, so... The last fish that I caught, that fourteen pound, that fish that was just under fourteen pound, it must have swam through a snag because it came up with a, a big lump of tree attached to the braid. So I had to de, de, de tree the braid, the main line, to get it in. And somewhere in the point of all this here, my GoPro battery for my head tort, my head one died, so it didn't record any of that fight at all. Isn't it marvellous when technology works? But still time for something bigger. So I'll give it five, I'll give it half an hour, then I'll wax some oil into these bits and get so hopefully get some more life in them. Fish number three. Just another jack. Not very big. Fish number three. Let's put it back in. There it goes. Three fish. Woo! Well, here we are on the way home. Travelling through everyone's favourite town, Enniskillen. Only the finest, most special humans come from Enniskillen. Anyway. Today I finished with three pike. One of them being just under 14 pounds. That's the best thing. Uh, the others were just jacks. But it was good to get out. It was good to get a, a day session on the river. There isn't an awful lot more I can say. I had a good time. I made a quite a nice meal. You know, I made sausage and egg wraps. I'm going to definitely do them again. They were good. enjoyed them. So, sausage and egg wraps, three pike, 
all in all I would say that was a success. We're creeping up slowly on the 4,000 subscriber mark. Very slowly on the 4,000 subscriber mark. So if you could do me the solid of if you could do me the solid of sharing or persuading or twisting someone's arm, not literally, don't go out there and fucking hamstring somebody and say, you have to fucking follow Scopes' channel! Otherwise we're gonna beat the shit out of you! Don't do that. You know, but it'd be nice if I just could make the uh, the 4,000 subscribers before the end of the end of this year's pike fishing season. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. I'm about 20 away from it, so I shouldn't be really that hard to do. So if, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then maybe give it a go.